Welcome to the Duke's Archives. Sort of. We're kind of in the middle there. And why are we getting naked? And why is the frame rate so bad? Well, it's just kind of unfortunately something that's happening up here. Welcome to one of the most obscure sequence breaks in the entire game. Uh, if you're familiar with this part of the game, you're supposed to go up here to the uh, top of the Duke's archives and enter the library where you find Seath. Seath, being immortal, is unkillable, so unfortunately you're kind of stuck there. Whee! And I died. Now what am I doing? Well, I'll explain that. Uh, like I said, you fight Seath and you're supposed to die. Uh, and it'll take you to his prison, and you'll break out of there. But we're not going to do that. In fact, we're not going to fight Seath at all. Now, how are we going to avoid this supposedly mandatory death? Well, you might have gotten the idea from seeing what I'm doing here. The Duke's Archives, uh, the main area of the Duke's Archives, is a series of library stacks that are three stories tall. Normally, the passageway to the back area, which we would, is one you would need, uh, is uh, not accessible until Seath actually kills you, at which point it opens up kind of a secret door. However, um, nothing actually stops us from getting onto those higher shelves if we can just find a way to roll onto them. And the only way to really do that is to do it while we're here on the elevator. What we do uh, is normally there's a gate in front of these elevators, but... Uh, at the top of Seath's area, there isn't one. So if we pull the lever, we can actually run onto this thing and then try and roll onto the edge of the railing. And as you can see from these repeated uh, failed attempts, it can be quite difficult. You'll fall, you'll die. But I've got a good feeling. Now there's two tricky rolls you have to make here. The first is that uh, as the le lever is pulled to send the elevator back down, you have to run on top of the wooden thing near the other lever and roll out so that you land on that diagonal piece on the elevator. That's the first tricky roll. Once you get onto that thing, you have to position yourself such. Like this. To roll this way, land on this railing, and here. Now we're on the third floor. Yep, congratulations. We have now skipped pretty much the entire seat sequence. The problem is we're stuck back here, unless we die, in which case we'll go back to the bonfire that we started at and have to do the whole thing over again. And I'm sure you'll figure out why I know this uh, fairly soon. Oh, and you can still get shot from those guys. In fact, one of my bigger problems here was that I was attracting too much attention. I also forgot which direction I needed to go. I ended up actually turning this uh, rotating uh, staircase, even though what I actually needed to do was go straight down. Because the reason for that is that if we go into that passageway over there, which I finally notice as I'm rotating it around and realize I need to turn it back, all the while getting pounded by the channeler, you need to go in there in order to open up the bookshelf shortcut to the bottom floor that leads to the bonfire. Now in the PC version, that bonfire is actually warpable, so when we actually get to it, uh, we can warp. But I got paranoid here. I wanted to uh, climb down the ladder, but I didn't want to get shot to death by this guy. But the problem is, he's far enough away that you can't lock on. And now I've got a channeler teleporting to an area where he can get a better angle on me. So I start going into panic mode here, looking for something that I can hit this guy with. figure a soul spear would work, but the problem is he's far enough out that you can't lock on to him, so I miss. And then I get shot. Yep, gotta go back and do the entire ladder and elevator trick over again. What fun. On my runs back, I decided to combo the slumbering dragon crest and fog rings. Uh, I discovered that channelers actually seem to have pretty much an infinite detection radius of you. Um, if they have any line of sight to you at all, they will detect you. Fortunately, I got a lot better at this. This was not my first uh, attempt to do it twice, but, as you can see, a little practice makes perfect. So now, 
I've gotten paranoid. I want to make sure that that channeler dies. Because I do not want him harassing me. Now he is actually seeing me, but because I'm standing behind this column, I think it blocks line of sight and he eventually loses interest. I'm not sure why that is, but I guess they have to be looking straight at you. Which is good, because it means we can poison him. Actually, I think he actually got poisoned on that first shot. And now we get behind the column. The advantage to this is not only will he see he eventually lost track of us already, he shot off randomly in another direction because we broke his lock somehow. I'll speed this up, try a headshot him a couple of times here. These are feather arrows. While their damage isn't as good as large arrows, uh, they have significantly better flight time and their damage doesn't drop off as much over distance. I think they're actually probably the best arrows for long distance sniping. If you're close enough that the large arrows are okay, that's probably better. They're cheaper, but the feather arrows can be really nice. I don't even know why I bother with this archer. To be honest, there's really no point to it. He didn't see me, and he really probably wouldn't have seen me, um, but I'm just paranoid at this point of dying back here. So he has to go. But, like the channeler, the fog ring causes him to lose track of me and just kind of give up. He goes back to standing like he's, nothing's happened. This is one of the nicest things about the fog ring. Enemies will lose you way quicker. Uh, and they don't detect you anywhere near as quickly. Now sometimes it's an advantage to be detected quicker. Um, the enemy will start to react and may move out of the position they were guarding, that sort of thing. But, under normal circumstances, not being seen is generally better than being seen. Now for this guy, locking on doesn't work, but the soul masses can lock on from a considerably better distance, and they'll take care of him. Down we go. Off to the right, that would be the way to get to the crystal cave, which is totally accessible right now. This lever will open the shortcut to that area, which also goes to the bottom floor of the second half, the back half of the archives and the bonfire. Now, under normal circumstances, saving at this bonfire would keep us uh, kind of stuck here until we actually manage to open up a way out. But there's a couple of ways out. One is that in the PC version we can warp. The other is that we can drop down from a higher floor onto the bookshelves in the first half. So really we're not stuck. However, this area here is where the uh, entrance that opens up after you die should be, down one floor below. You can see that we can pass through here to get to the upper floors. And as I said, you could probably drop down uh, that way if you wanted to land on the Avalon bookcase. However, we can't actually... I, I could swear there was a lever here, but it turns out there isn't. So if you actually go to the area where the shortcuts should be, you're actually inside the bookshelf there and you can't uh, get it out of the way. The other thing that's interesting, if you skip Seek, uh, is that there's another inaccessible area. And that area is the prison that you get sent to when Seek kills you. And I'll show you why in a second. The main gist of it is that when we get to these doors, they will be locked. And of course they're locked because you're supposed to get the key to escape. The problem is, the key to escape is actually inside the locked doors in the prison tower. Uh, since we can't get through the locked door to get into the prison tower, we can't get into the prison tower at all right now. Now, since Logan is in there, and since obviously we want the best sorceries in the game from Logan, we can't rescue him. Now, this might seem like a horrible thing to do. Granted, you could fix this by just going up, uh, going back and getting killed by Seath if you wanted to. But, we don't actually need to go rescue Logan right now. So instead, we'll just ignore the entire prison tower for a moment. And instead head towards Crystal Cave. 
Now, Seath doesn't care if you fought him in the Duke's archives. He will always appear to be the final boss in the Crystal Cavern. Um, so it doesn't really matter. You never actually need to see him up in the Duke's archives. And speaking of which, that particular fight is actually uh, avoidable. Or not avoidable, um, escapable. Um, it's one of the only boss fights where you can walk back out through the fog door. You can also just uh, quit game or homeward bone out of the Seath fight uh, in the Duke's archives. And as we've seen, it's totally optional. So... We can just leave. Now you'll notice, Logan's not in here. He has not escaped. We cannot uh, go bust him out, so we're stuck with that. Now that does suck in some ways. Um, it's probably better to let Seath kill you if you're a sorcery person, because then you can actually get the sorceries from Logan before you fight Seath. But for now, let's just clear out the loot here. The channeler set, which is actually an okay heavy set uh, for a caster. And the Mimic. You'll notice the Mimic's a little harder to hit here than the ones in Anerlondo. They have about the same health or so, but they're considerably uh, more resilient. And, and you notice that with all sorts of different enemies. They're just stronger in some areas than they are in others, even if they're the same type of enemy. This is a callback to Demon Souls. You get an enchanted Falchon here. It's clearly kind of a callback to the Crescent Falchon that you got in uh, Demon Souls in 4.1. There's also the Crystal Ember, which allows you to make crystal weapons at the giant blacksmith. And the giant cell key, which is a key to Logan's cell. And it's completely useless because we can't even get into the prison, so we can't use the key to let Logan out. Okay, on to the Crystal Cave. I've skipped the actual crystal caving part, and instead we'll just deal with Seath. This took me many attempts, and really Seath is not a hard boss, as you'll see it's incredibly easy to actually kill him. But he has a tail that we want to cut off. Normally I've been ignoring the tails because they're just not useful to a sorcerer, but Seath's tail, as you might imagine from a giant magic using dragon, is actually pretty useful. And it's also the hardest tail in the game to cut off, because it is incredibly location sensitive. And Seath never stops moving the damn thing. So what we've done is power up into uh, our hyper mode there with the red tear stone ring before we even enter the fight. And we're going to use a fairly tried and true method here. With Seath, you uh, have to kill this crystal here in the back. Uh, it grants him immortality. Basically his health will instantly and fully regenerate, unless this crystal is broken. Any damage can break this. Uh, it doesn't take any at all. Uh, and what's interesting is it can be any damage. Not just your damage, but also Seath's damage. So if you lure Seath back here, you can actually make him uh, shoot a laser at this crystal from his mouth, and he'll break it himself. Now, every time it breaks, it stuns him. But it, he can only do this once per fight, and the stun lasts for a decent amount of time. This is the best opportunity that you have to cut the tail off. You need to do a fair amount of damage to this kind of rough area here. And you have to be quick, because as soon as he's done, uh, he'll recover from the stun and start thrashing his tails around, which would instantly kill me, even at full health, actually. You can take it if you have an enormous amount of vitality, but I do, I do not. Okay, see the tail is down, so we're just going to kill him. For this, we'll need maximum magical overdrive. We're already in hyper mode, so we'll just do that. And I've got the Firestorm Pyromancy. Uh, I just wanted to give this one a try. It's got a long cast time, but being right next to Seath is actually fairly safe. And it does a decent chunk of damage to him. Not as much as I was expecting. About 14 point. Uh, Firestorm can do technically more damage if it hits, but as you can see, Great Combustion does almost as much damage and kills him nearly as quickly. And that's it for Seath. The first of the four end bosses. Not with a bang, but a whimper. And there's a bonfire here now, which is kind of nice. I guess if you wanted to farm Twinkling Titanite or stones off the things, you can do that. But it's also just an easier way to get the hell out of here. And the Duke's archives, as I said, are warpable in the PC version, so we can warp right back. And we want to, because we need to go see Logan. He's still not here, though. 
Normally, when you kill Seath, Logan is supposed to escape, and he'll be waiting in that room on his own. But he didn't escape. Why not? Well, he's supposed to have escaped, but because we sequence broke things, uh, we didn't trip a flag somewhere. Basically, we need to go back to the prison. But, as you may have noticed, it's locked. Well, it's not locked anymore. Don't ask me why, but killing Seath will open the door. It also opens the shortcut door back to the first floor, which you actually just saw. Why this happens, I don't know. Uh, I don't think Fromm ever intended that you would ever actually be able to do this uh, without getting killed by Seath and sent to the prison the first time, which seems to be part of what opens it to begin with. So why it works this way when Seath is dead, I don't know. But it does mean that we can finally go back to the prison, even though we have absolutely no reason to go there. Well, I wouldn't say absolutely no reason. There's actually a couple of miracles and a firekeeper soul in there, so it's not, not terrible. However, we're going to need to do something weird in order to actually trigger uh, Logan being able to escape from his cell. Yes, we need to actually break into our cell. Instead of breaking out, we need to actually break in. So if we drop down here, this leads to the bonfire where we would have spawned, and there's the cell guard that would have been guarding our cell had Seath killed us. So yes, we're breaking into a cell in order to break out of it. I don't even know why I fight these guys. You notice that Combustion's, uh, actually its hit window is a little longer than you would expect. You'd expect it's just snap of the fingers and then damage is dealt if they're in range. But they can actually walk into the range of, uh, Combustion. Just another reason why Combustion and Great Combustion are such incredibly great pyromancies. They just have a huge area of effect, they linger a lot longer than you'd expect, and the damage is fantastic. And that triggers the al weird alarm cutscene, which normally would be triggered as soon as you break out from your cell, but in this case it wasn't triggered at all. However, I think this is the trigger that causes Logan to actually uh, escape on his own, or rather this trigger needs to have been set, the idea that you've escaped from the prison, and then Seath needs to be dead. If both of those conditions are met and you didn't free Logan on your own, then you can now free him. As we'll see, something kind of funny happens here. Unfortunately, the alarm causes those tentacle Picasso things, whatever they're called, uh, to rush up the stairs, which they're kind of annoying. They're a lot easier to deal with when they're all clustered together. You can throw fireballs at them or something like that. Let's try out Greater Magic Weapon on our side sword. Whoop, that could have gone better. It reminds me that the side sword has a great range on its R2, so why am I wasting my time trying to slash these these ladies when I could be baiting their attacks and just poking them to death? Plenty of damage on this, and this isn't even, remember, the best magic weapon spell. The other nice thing about uh, Great Magic Weapon and Crystal Magic Weapon, uh, and also Magic Weapon, which has five uses, but Freight and Crystal have three, uh, those number of uses is a lot better compared to the Faith Buffs, which you'll only get one unless you slot multiple copies of the Miracle. If you're using a regular Catalyst, you can get tons of casts of the Magic Weapon spells, which is a huge advantage in their favor. However, there's a reason why From did this, and there's actually a specific reason why they chose three casts uh, if you use a regular catalyst. There's the extra key, which you can use to open the cell where if uh, Rhea survived the catacombs and you bought all of her uh, spells, She'll appear in hollowed form in one of these cells. You can kill her and get uh, an ivory talisman, which isn't really a very good talisman, I don't think. The canvas talisman, I think, is better, and the dark moon talisman is better. I could be wrong on that. I'm not huge on faith, but I've never actually really needed to use the ivory catalyst for anything. And do a blind poke here. Yeah, with the range on that side sword and the double poke. It's a great weapon. And this is one of the many reasons why. There's two back here that don't attack. Unless attacked, they also have about twice as much HP. These are the ones that drop the miracles. 
with the alarm on, it's easy to tell which one's which because they won't leave this area. Now you'll notice Logan's not here. So somehow, he hadn't escaped. Uh, but as soon as I triggered the alarm, he somehow managed to magically disappear from the cell that still hasn't been unlocked and get out. I don't know. The flags are screwed up. There's a firekeeper soul in here in the big cell, though, so you want to go in and get it. And even though there's absolutely no point to doing what I am about to do, let's climb up here and turn that damn alarm off. Again, there's absolutely no reason to do this. The only reason you even go up here is to turn off the alarm and get the key that opens the doors to leave, which is completely unnecessary. So let's check out Seath's tail weapon. It's the Moonlight Greatsword, and while it's not buffed up, it's okay right now. It's a greatsword type weapon, as you might imagine, and it uses the greatsword moveset. Um, the difference is that this weapon scales entirely with intelligence, so its damage is based solely on our intelligence. And its R2 attacks, as you can see there, are uh, magical lasers. As cool as this is, the damage you saw wasn't very good, and uh, it wastes the durability of the weapon. But, there are a couple advantages to the Moonlight Greatsword. First of all, as an uh, int scaling weapon, if we use our dragon scales on it to level it up a bit, it'll get S uh, intelligence scaling, which can cause it to do pretty good damage. The other thing is, it does entirely 100% magical damage. I don't know if there's any other weapon that does nothing but magic damage. So against anything that uh, is more resistant to physical damage than it is to magical damage, the full brunt of the sword's damage is going to be magical. That can actually make it a little stronger than its stats might suggest, because it's not using split damage like a lot of other things. And there you go, you have the key to a door that we absolutely had no purpose with. We don't need it. It's not used for anything. Completely pointless. Anyway, Logan should be out now. Again, there's no particular reason why this should be happening in the order that it is happening, but here it is. Hello there. I was expecting you. This place is truly magnificent. More than expected. As promised, I shall share the new sorceries with you. And the secret of Seath's immortality. A little late on that one. Okay, Logan sells the crystal spells. Crystal, Homing Crystal Soul Mask, Crystal Soul Spear, and Crystal Magic Weapon. These are, flat out, the best sorceries in Dark Souls. There is no comparison. And I want to buy all of them, even though Soul, uh, Crystal Soul Spear requires more intelligence than I have right now. That's because we need it to trigger something for Logan. Fortunately, I have these Souls of a Hero that give 10,000 souls each, so purchasing all of his uh, expensive spells is not going to be a problem. Now, when we leave Logan and talk to him again, who are you? Stay clear, stay clear of my work. Curses upon you. How dare you disturb me? He's gone crazy and doesn't seem to recognize us. This happens after you buy all his spells. And once you reload, you will actually see Logan's no longer here. Where could he have gone? If you've played the game, you probably know. But we need to go back up to that room that we didn't go into at the beginning, where Seath was. Now that Seath is dead, that room is uh, empty, but has some neat stuff in it. You'll notice the backstab was pretty solid on that. Strangely enough, these crystal hollows are actually weak to magic. Um, Nearly everything else that uses crystals on it, the crystal golems, things like that, they're pretty magic resistant. But for some reason, the hollows are more uh, vulnerable to magic. I don't know why that is. It's inconsistent. It's very strange. And this is an unupgraded Moonlight Greatsword, so it's not bad. I like Greatswords, so there could be some use for it. I certainly went to all the effort to get it. Now, the interesting thing about the Greatsword is it is partially transparent. Uh, so even if we weren't wearing the Fog Ring, it would be a little the blade would be a little bit see-through. It's kind of interesting. And that's a feature that you'll see in the Moonlight Greatsword in almost all of uh, From Software's games. Sometimes it's called the Sword of Moonlight. That's what it was called in uh, Demon Souls. I think it comes from uh, Kingsfield. Actually, as does Seath.
anyway, we'll head up here to an area we have never visited before to find a naked Logan. He's gone insane and is now aggressive, so we've got to put him down, which we would probably want to do anyway. So let's pop our greater magic weapon. This will probably be the last time the great magic weapon gets used, because we now have crystal magic weapon, which is exactly the same except way better. Logan is using a strange new catalyst and a weird spell that shoots a laser at the ground that causes crystals to pop up. And yes, we can get both of those. We just have to take him down. He's also got like a sword or something. Didn't do him any good. Oh well, poor Logan. We can get Sorcery, White Dragon Breath, Logan's Big Hat, and the Tin Crystallization Catalyst, which is the best catalyst in the game. More on that in a moment. You also see the Large Magic Ember. Now this is why I said the Enchanted Ember is so much better than the Large Magic Ember. You can pick up the Enchanted Ember pretty much at the start of the game and make a decent enchanted weapon. Uh, but the Large Magic Ember, you won't be able to get until after you've killed Seath, which means you have to have acquired the Lord Vessel and then placed it, and then go to the Duke's Archives, go through the whole thing, go through the Crystal Cave, kill Seath, and then come back here and do this thing with Logan. Well, I don't think you actually need to kill Logan. The, the Ember will be here. But the point is, you have to do all of that stuff just to get uh, the Large Magic Ember. You can do it with Enchanted far easier. So we've got these new crystal spells. Why don't we try them out? See what all the fuss is about. Well, you won't see the true fuss of them until I've comboed them properly with all the necessary steps. But for now, at least, we can show what they do. First, let's compare Homing Soul Mass and Crystal, Homing Crystal Soul Mass. I can't use Crystal Spear or White Dragon Breath because of their high requirements, but I can use Crystal Magic Weapon. And boy, is this thing good. So let's warp to the Sunlight Altar, just because I like the bridge, and I like the hollows there because they're easy to backstab, and have low defenses, so they're a good place to do damage comparisons. Of course, this is all magic damage anyway, so it's pretty much going to be the same against the same defenses. So the first thing we'll do is switch to the Tin Crystallization Catalyst. The important thing about the Tin Crystallization Catalyst is that when you use it, you gain an enormous bonus to your magic adjust. This thing is way better than the other catalysts we have available to us. However, when we use it, it halves our number of casts. Essentially, each cast uses two. However, the damage is considerable. It doesn't look like it because of the way that it doesn't work is quite the same way. But just to compare, you can see it's about 50 to 75% stronger. That's pretty impressive. Now here's the reason why Crystal Magic Weapon has three casts. Because when you equip a Tin Crystallization Catalyst, it becomes one. Now with the Tin Crystallization Catalyst, it's quite comparable to the high-end uh, Faith buffs and in some ways a little bit better. It also puts those cool crystals all over your weapon, unlike the other magic abilities. It is pretty much one of the better buffs in the game. A high faith build um, with Sunlight Blade or a plus three Dark Moon Blade Covenant uh, cast is better, but it's still pretty good. Now if we go back to where Logan used to be, we can get the rest of his set and his catalyst. Logan's catalyst is a little weird. It's a regular catalyst, so unlike the Tin Crystallization Catalyst, it'll uh, not have your number of castings, uh, but it'll never be as good. And uh, as you can see, the Sorcerer Catalyst is actually still better. You need to have pretty high intelligence for Logan's Catalyst to be a better choice. Uh, it's pretty much for very high intelligence. Uh, as you can see, the Tin Crystallization Catalyst just blows everything else out of the water. It's not even close. You have a downside uh, in having your casts, but you're not going to need it. Uh, you'll see. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Now we need an appropriate victim to uh, inaugurate some of these abilities. I think I know just the guy. And for that we need to go back to the bridge. ourselves up a bit. Equip everything we need. This will work. Just 
kind of run around here. Not sure if I need to go to the thing, and then I see the fire. Yep, he's back. He'll come back pretty much as soon as you walk out past the sunlight altar. Shame that didn't knock me into red tear stone range, or I could really mess this guy up. Okay, so we just need to lure the drake onto the bridge. We'll use crystal magic weapon on our balder side sword. We'll pop a home in crystal soul mass. We'll just wait here for a second, and we should land on the bridge. Now, several of these orbs were actually blocked or absorbed by his body, but one hit did about 400 damage to him. So if they'd all hit, it would have done quite a lot. And then we just wail on him with crystal uh, magic weapon, and he's dead so fast you pretty much couldn't even tell what was going on. And he's considered relatively tough. I think this is the only appropriate uh, explanation.